Hey everybody, it's Gavin Syme. Welcome to Liberty School. This is a bit of a new series that I'm putting together and just going to do some videos here and there talking about the principles of law and liberty and things like that. Because I get a lot of questions from people wanting to know what to do, how to stand up, how do I know the law? And we're going to address some of that starting right now. Let's take on today the principles of law in America. Now, we're going to also do some videos talking about the deeper nature of law, the fundamental law that's universal beyond borders, human rights, and basic law. And we're going to talk about that a little bit today. But let's deal with it in particular as it works with law in America. You know, when we think about law, we think of legislators making laws, city councils making laws, and then they tell us what to do. This is the fundamental farce of law that if people really understood, they would act completely differently. Law is not what a legislator says. See, we are a republic. That's right, not a democracy. A democracy is just the tyranny of the many. Our republic is a government by the consent of the governed. That means we, the people, hold all the power. We delegate authority to representatives and we tell them, you can maintain the law in these ways. And then we grant them the authorities that must apply or abide within the boundaries of the constitutions, state and federal. Now, let's think about this for a minute. People will say, well, it's all tyranny because nobody has the right to make laws over anybody. Well, let's go back a little bit because here's the misnomer in that. The government doesn't have the right to make laws that simply restrict everything in your life. The government only has the right the delegates that we empower in government. They're taking our authority, we're delegating them to enforce the law and to maintain liberty. What is law? Law, when you get down to the basic fundamentals of it, and you can go back to political philosophers like John Locke, on whose principles the Constitution were largely influenced. And so law goes down to life, liberty, and property. Anything that is not protecting life, liberty, and property in a law sense. It is not law, it is lawless. Now, when I say that, I don't just mean your life, liberty, and property. Liberty doesn't mean you get whatever you want or can take whatever you want. Life, liberty, and property equally for everyone. That's the fundamental nature of law. And that's what our constitutions hold up in America. So that's why we have the right to self-defense. We have the right to arms. Law gives us the right to life. We have the right to liberty. That means we have the right to not be inappropriately searched or have our property seized. We have the right to life, to liberty, to property. We have the right to due process and not to be put away or killed without due process of law. So we talk about these fundamentals. These are universal fundamental human rights. When government denies them, it doesn't mean they're not rights. In fact, John Locke said, and I'm paraphrasing here, but he said that when a magistrate, when a judge ceases to act within the authority given him by the people, when he ceases to act within the law of life, liberty, and property, which is what law is, he's no longer a judge. He or she is nothing more than a criminal. Now, I realize in practice, as I've seen firsthand in the courtroom, we might still get pummeled because we've allowed our nation to become so lawless. We've allowed our perception of law to go to the point where we think law is what the government tells us to do. And people will say to me, well, Gavin, that's the law. You have to follow it. And I'll say, absolutely not. That's not the law. There's no such thing as a legal gun restriction because the law... The Constitution says, shall not be infringed. Now, I don't know what part of that the government misunderstands, but it's not just guns. Guns are not in and of itself liberty. Guns are a way that we help preserve liberty. Liberty is all of it. It's speech. It's the right to religion. It's the right to the press. It's all of these fundamental rights that protect our life, liberty, and property. So we're talking about law in America. Where are we at? You just learned some of the fundamental principles of law, and these are the principles you won't hear the lawyers talking about. You see, you don't need a lawyer to understand the Constitution. You don't need a lawyer to understand the principles of law. What's happening is we have so much lawlessness, so much mumbo-jumbo, so much foolishness going on. We have elected officials delegating the power of making law to agencies, which they have no authority to do in the first place. We gave them our power to go legislate and make laws within the boundaries of the Constitution's life, liberty, property. 
That's the only authority they have. When they act outside that, they simply become criminals. What we have now running America from the federal to the state level, we have it from our legislators to our police to our judges. We have bureaucratic terrorists. You go into a courtroom, you don't get due process. You get to go in and present evidence on your behalf if the judge approves it. You get to go in and speak in a way that the judge approves. You get to go in and have the state's judge, the state's prosecutor, the state's jury eating the state's donuts in the state's building telling you to be quiet if they don't like something you say and then turning to you and saying, that's due process. But that's not due process. It's criminal. What our judges are doing is criminal. It's disgusting. These people aren't honorable. They shouldn't be called your honor. They are revolting. They are criminals in their behavior. The whole system hinges on the foundation of law, life, liberty, and property. And you have to get back to that foundation. We need to as a nation. What do we do? What's the problem? How do we solve it? As a nation, we need to get back to standing on principle. Stop going for the freebies. Stop expecting something for nothing. Stop looking for the government to fix all your problems. Start being resourceful. Start standing up. Start defending the weak and the fatherless and your neighbor. Get back to the foundation. Repent. Return to God. Now, we don't all have to agree on the religious aspects, but I'm a Christian and I put my faith in Christ. I'm not afraid of all these crooks and all these judges, but I do know that we have to stand up for them. And this is a message specifically for my Christian brothers and sisters. The church is failing to stand up. They're off hiding in corners, and in the name of Romans 13, they're saying, well, we don't have to do this because we're called to obey government. Wrong. You're not called to obey government because even government is subject to the higher authority, to the higher law, to the higher liberty. All men are created equal. And when government acts outside the authority of law and our delegated authority and liberty here in America with our constitutions that we gave them, they're not lawful. They're not judges. They're not legislators. They are criminals. They are bureaucratic terrorists. Now, does that mean you fight everything? No, you have to pick your battles. But it's time that we as a nation started standing up. It's time my Christian brothers and sisters started standing up for what's right. And if you want to get down to the fundamental principle of law, I'm going to take a line from Jesus. He says, love God with all your heart. And then he sums up the law with love your neighbor as yourself. That's not happening in America. We don't have law. We have lawlessness. We don't have liberty. We don't, we have tyranny. We don't have freedom. We have statism. And until we, the people are willing to stop being apathetic, put aside the beer and the Cheetos and the football and give a little bit of your energy to standing up for the liberty of your children so they don't have to live as slaves.